Come now to part four. It's our last in our series on effective communication with elders, both with the congregation and among yourself. So our, our, our last major theme is this. Elders are to model good communication within the church body. I'll repeat that. Elders are to model good communication within the church body. One, elders communicating within the eldership. I cannot emphasize enough elders practicing being good communicators with one another. Now, sometimes this can be done very practically, going out to lunch together, having some retreats together, getting to know one another better. If you know one another and you trust one another, you will be better communicators because you understand one another. But if there's suspicion of one another, distrust, I mean, every little thing you say will be misunderstood or taken in the wrong way. So as elders, you need to become people who trust one another and get to know one another. So I really want to encourage you as elders to really get to know how one another speaks, get to know one another's strengths and weaknesses, and learn in your elders' meetings and on a personal basis how to communicate well with each other. And if there's communication snags, that you try to break through those and, and openly talk about this among yourselves. This is very, very important in making decisions. And you have to learn to laugh. and You have to learn to enjoy one another. And we often say among our elders, all we can do is fail. It's better than doing nothing. We're not a passive eldership. We're an active eldership, a proactive eldership. That means good communication, good interaction. It means you can state your opinion and people won't all jump on you. It means that you can back up and you can say, okay, let's go ahead with this. Let's try this. It's not my particular way of doing things, but let's get a consensus. Let's move forward. All we can do is fail. So, practice this. In fact, every meeting you're practicing good communication with your fellow elders. And if there's a problem you have with an elder in communication or understanding, get together over lunch, over a meal. It's a great time. There's something about a meal, eating together, that's very, very effective like this. And say, you know, I want to get to know you better, or I'm misunderstanding the way you communicate. Uh, let's try to work through this, the two of us together. That's very important. And remember, as elders, we help one another. We pastor one another. We counsel one another. We support one another. We get to study one another and understand one another. This provides good communication. One of the best elderships I've ever seen is an eldership that every year, twice a year, they take a retreat together. And on that retreat, they try to build relationships and understanding so that in the tough times together, they are good communicators. Now, second, elders' communication uh, to the congregation. Oh, this is something I feel very strongly about. Let me tell you a story about a man, a man who had been an elder many, many years, and he retired from the eldership but stayed in the same church. He told me this story. He thought he was a good communicator, and the elders were good at communicating to the congregation. After one year being off to the eldership, he had a great revelation. They were not communicating. He thought they were communicating, but they were not communicating. And they were poor at communicating as elders to the congregation. And he said, he went to the elders and said, you know, when I was an elder, I thought we were communicating to our congregation. But now that I'm not an elder, I have no idea what you're doing. There's no communication between you and the others. And things happen in the church and things are done. And there's no communication. He said, I want to see this improved. So let me just say this to you and say this very sincerely. Most of us are not communicating as a leadership body to our people. We think we are, but we are not. Very rare. So let me give you some ideas of how to improve your communication with the congregation. Here are some things you can do. First of all, you may, as many churches, have a prayer line. Will you elders get on that prayer line? You ask for prayer for yourselves. You be some of the ones that lead in those prayer lists. Put your name down there with a particular prayer request for someone else. Make sure you're communicating to the congregation what you need prayed for, not just praying for others all the time. Maybe you have a big decision ahead. Ask the congregation to pray about this decision. Maybe you're overloaded with work. Ask the congregation. Pray for us. We're overloaded at work. Pray for our families. Pray for our marriages. Ask the congregation to do this for you. They'll appreciate it. And maybe you're having some problems. Tell them. They figure that out anyway. Maybe some elders are just tired and they need a sabbatical. Tell the congregation. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Do not assume they can read your mind. They're not mind readers. If they were mind readers, they could go into circus or go to Las Vegas or something, make a lot of money, but they're not. Don't assume 
that people know what you're thinking. Uh, you have a church bulletin. Put in the church bulletin a little section of the elders where you ask prayer requests. Tell people some of the things you're doing, some of the things you're planning. We have a newsletter that goes out every month, and in that newsletter, there's an elder section. Sometimes we tell of the history of that elder, his biography, who he is. People often go, oh, I had no idea about, about who he really was. Also in that section, they can give things they're thinking about, things that be, you'll see, maybe some construction in the church, some new programs, or some things happening in the church. In that section, they're communicating to the church through that monthly newsletter, through the church bulletin. Maybe Sunday morning you have a little time for prayer and during that time you have elder time where you just say, well, now we're dealing with certain issues right now and uh, you need to know these issues that we're dealing with. And, uh, or maybe some burdens on your heart or a new vision you feel God has given and you're asking Him to pray about it. You'll bring it to the congregation eventually. Oh, I cannot emphasize the importance of this subject that people don't see you as some back room uh, oligarchy that makes big decisions and no one, no one knows anything about it. That's why I don't like the term elder rule. Sounds like you're a bunch of kings in a back room uh, making uh, edicts or pronouncements and people go, ooh, boy, who are they? Let people know who you are. Be as transparent as you possibly can be and let that information flow as best you can without jeopardizing privacy. Bring in groups. This is so important. You have groups that you're dealing with. For example, let's say you're dealing with the youth and you've got a junior high leader or a senior high leader or a college leader. They need to come in and meet with the elders once a year, twice a year. Talk together. Have a meal together. And give them your burden. Give them some direction. Tell them what you want. Ask them lots and lots of questions. Where are they frustrated? How can we help you? Good, good communication with the major groups within the church, such as meeting with your deacons and being with the deacons. And don't be afraid to repeat your values over and over to the church. For example, very often we have a major operation or we have some crisis in the church with people. And we'll say this statement. We've said it probably hundreds of times. We want to be a caring, praying church. We want to be a prayer and caring, praying church. I'm sure there's some people who think that we've lost our minds or we're suffering some dementia. We say this so many times. So we have a major, major operation tomorrow, major member, and they're going in for this, this surgery. And with church, we want to pray. And we'll say, we want to be a praying, caring church. Just repeat that. Then they start, really, it takes years for people to get your values. What's important in this church? What are the priorities in this church? So using emails, using newsletters, you can even have a special elder letter come out a couple times a year. Uh, you have meetings with the whole church where you share your heart, you share your vision, share your burden, you let the people ask you lots and lots of questions. A really good thing to do, we do this about every five years, we hand out a big survey. Now, it can hurt. It can hurt. I'm warning you. Some of the things people say, oh, boy, you wonder how you survive these things. You have a survey out and you ask people, how are we doing as leaders? Where are we weak? Where are we strong? What about these programs? What do you think that we need to do? Or what suggestions do you have? And we want them to evaluate us, evaluate the church, how we can strengthen it. Now, I want to warn you, these things can hurt. But people know these things anyway. You might as well know the truth. And we shouldn't be defensive. Poor leadership is defensive leadership. We want to be transparent. You know, you can't even do everything. You can't be perfect as leaders. Don't even try. You'll just frustrate yourself. Do the best you can. Be as effective as you can. But you have limitations. And sometimes you need to tell people, we can't be all things to all people. We can't have the best programs in every area. We want to focus on certain things. We want to be good Bible teachers. We want to be good people of prayer and of witness and of gospel orientation. And one another -ing. these are the things we have to focus on. We just don't have the talent or the money and the manpower to do everything. People often want you to do everything, or particularly their little interests. You have to tell people, we're limited. Do our very best. You don't have to defend yourself on everything. You're not perfect. You're not the Messiah. Just tell the people, we are trying, and maybe you can help us and pray for us. And third, Groups within the church communicating with one another. Yes, groups have to communicate to one another. So elders and deacons have to have certain meetings together. They need to share notes and share their minutes. We have an elder at the deacons meeting and a deacon at the elders meeting. We share our minutes together, have meetings together. So we're communicating, communicating a lot with one another. And there may be uh, many times when the, the women's ministry may need to get together with the youth ministry to talk about uh, areas that they're overlapping in and, and doing the same thing. 
You have youth ministry and you have music ministry and you have maybe music ministry in the youth and music ministry for the whole congregation. They need to meet together, maybe meet with the elders. Good communication among the groups functioning. Maybe you've got an evangelistic committee in the church or you've got some kind of mercy ministry in the church. Need to communicate. Everything you can do, anything you can do to communicate is going to be helpful. Let me just remind you this in closing. You may think you're communicating, but ask others. Step away from yourselves. You have your meetings. You do uh, uh, your times together, and you're making your decisions. But I want to remind you, no one else knows what you're doing. This brings up another good point. As individual elders, you need to be communicating out among the people, talking, listening, uh, sharing. As a group of elders, agree together on what you can share about. Ask people questions. Ask, how, how, do, you, how do you think we're doing? How, do you, well, how can we improve things? And uh, uh, let people know you're interested. So personally communicate. Communicate as a group, but improve your communication. Have a desire to do this. Let me assure you of one thing. You can do a much better job. A much better job. Don't be deceived by what you're doing. So, you are a communicator. You must speak. You must speak properly. The book of Proverbs is so important to all of us. Learn Proverbs. As you read through Proverbs, I did this years ago, I started to mark all the verses. In fact, I put them in categories. Verses on speech, proper speech, improper speech. It is filled with valuable information on how to be a skilled speaker. So much of who we are comes out from our heart through our lips. So you're in the communication business. And if you have a hard time communicating, then ask God to give you the power through the Holy Spirit and ask others to help you to be a better communicator. Work hard at it. Be diligent. And your people will be blessed. You'll be a better shepherd. You'll have a, a, a more relaxed church. You'll avoid many, many frustrations and divisions if you're a good communicator. Seek this. Pursue it all of your life. And I guarantee you, you will be a good elder.